Hello everybody and welcome back to C.L. Aldridge Art. Today we are coloring in the uh, book Twilight Garden by Maria Trolle, this adorable little red fox. We did start this fox on Sunday uh, using Derwent Inktense, which is a water medium. If you are unfamiliar with Inktense, it is a water-soluble ink pencil and it lays down beautifully so if you'd like to color along with me please stay tuned and we'll get started For those of you who do not know me, my name is Christine Aldridge. I am an artist. I do have a line of coloring books, all my own. Uh, however, today I am really enjoying coloring in Maria's book. Uh, we did start this project on Sunday's stream last, and um, I'm really having fun with it. Uh, the color that I'm using right now is the felt green, and it is... Um, Probably my favorite green in the set, although I have to say I love the mallard green, but of course mallard green is not suitable for everything. Um, and I'm just laying down a base shade. Uh, this is for these uh, leaves underneath these uh, purple and blue flowers. Uh, now, if you were with me last Sunday, you will probably note that I have darkened up the fox colors quite a bit. Uh, I did just progressively layer that on, and then I added a red oxide as the final uh, red layer uh, on the fox and I really love the way that he turned out. Uh, he is completed so I can't actually show you that but I am showing you that right now I'm using the iron green which is a dark blue green and um, laying in the shadows on the leaves underneath the flower. So I do want those darker down near the bottom to give the idea that there are all sorts of things laying shadows all over those leaves. And that's really all that you're doing with coloring is, you know, telling the eye that there are shadows, that there are no shadows, uh, you know, what's in the light, what's in the dark, and, um, you know, just using your own imagination to uh, decide where things are and what direction they're facing. I do hope that today finds all of you in good health and happiness and, um, uh, you know, that, uh, that whatever the troubles that you have in your life, that they are manageable and that you, um, you know, can certainly find support here in the coloring community at any time. Um, it is one of the things that drew me to uh, art and to drawing and, uh, and one of the things that this community does best is stand with each other. I was over in uh, Sammy's stream earlier uh, today as I'm uh, voicing this over. It is Saturday the 23rd of, well I guess it's, yeah, Sunday. <laughs> It's, it's very early, Sunday morning, the 23rd of February, and um, uh, we were having an especially good discussion over there today about the uh, the way that the, uh, the community, you know, makes us know that no matter what troubles we have in our lives, we are most assuredly not alone. Um, not in the specific trouble that we have, uh, nor in the... Um, uh, nor in the community in general are any of us ever alone. We need only reach out and one of us will be there. And chances are pretty good, like Sammy said, one of us is going through exactly the same thing that you are. Maybe not exactly the same circumstances, but certainly the same feelings about it. And that uh, we do all share this wonderful love of coloring. Okay, so now I have moved on to one of the purple flowers, and this is the deep violet that I have in my hand right now. This, it's, I am hearing Lori at Color My World uh, right now going, don't outline things, but uh, I have found that with my uh, ink tent that it is best to outline and then go in with this lighter fuchsia pink, uh, and that way I can get the colors to blend exactly the way I want them, which is to be dark around the outside and lighter toward the interior. So, Lori, I apologize. <laughs> 
but I like to outline. Uh, okay, so now in these particular flowers, the secret really is in the brushwork. Uh, I started by uh, making the darker, activating that ink, you know, the dark around the outside, and then tapping the uh, brush off and going for the lighter interior. By then, everything, all the ink is dissolving together, and you can spread it around and fade those outer edges in toward the center with your brush. And it makes for a nice glow on those leaves so that they look three-dimensional. And that is really what we're doing, is fooling the eye into believing that it is a three-dimensional flower there on the page. And I love the way Inktense works for this particular uh, method of coloring. As you can see what I'm doing, I'm dabbing off there on the uh, paper towel. And so now I am about to start on just a little bit of the background. I did fill in the uh, other two purple flowers and did at least one of the sets of leaves, but I wanted to show this to you. Um, that is the subtle brown that I have in my hand, and I am just laying down a little bit, not pressing hard, uh, just a little bit of color for the background. And, um, oh, I realized that I had forgotten a couple of uh, stems, so I'm catching those um, and so in putting the saddle brown down uh, it's intended to look a little bit like garden soil our little baby fox is asleep in the garden and uh, so it's you know intended to look like garden soil and then I use the oak uh, pencil which is a darker brown still and uh, use that to do some shadow work uh, just you know underneath the leaves underneath the little box um, I try to uh, blend this out uh, at the very edges so that it looks more like a cloud uh, and you know sort of surrounds the picture as opposed to drawing the eye away or using uh, hard borders or anything like that. I wanted it to be very soft and uh, welcoming and yeah soft. So like a soft glow behind all of this stuff to just sort of set it off. Stuff? All of the little little garden stuff. You know what I mean. And thank you for bearing with the musical interludes. Uh, as you know, or I've said before in my videos, when I do edit, one of the things I edit is uh, the amount of space between my words. And uh, occasionally that does make the voiceover a little bit ahead of the action. Uh, so thank you for your patience with the musical interludes. Speaking of which, <laughs> there was one. Uh, okay, so I'm just now finishing up the background. As you can see, I did make a cut and I did do the leaves. Um, I'm, now I'm going to add just the rest of the leaves. And one thing about it, when you are coloring in these books, you are doing endless leaves. Uh, all right, now I'm adding a just a bit of gold gel pen and uh, showing the flash on that so that you can see in the center of those flowers. And now I get to start on um, the yellow flower. Now, um, those are something that I added after I originally started coloring this. I, I had done the pink one on 
uh, the stream, but uh, I love the way that the yellow one turned out. So that's the sun or the golden yellow. Yep, that's the golden yellow and the sienna yellow. And I do believe that I used the, um, I think I used the baked earth. I think I used the same color that I used in the fox. Yep, that's the baked earth uh, to do the base of these. And of course, these are my favorite color flowers of any kind of flowers. I love the roses that have the, um, you know, they're yellow roses with apricot tips or uh, apricot roses with darker tips. And they're, they're dyed. I don't think they occur naturally that way. Uh, but those are my favorite roses. And um, I just love the way mixing the pink and the yellow. And then if you look at the one over there just, um, just above my left hand, uh, that one I actually did in purple and fuchsias, uh, once again mimicking the colors that I'd used below. So what I'm doing with that is I'm looking for some color co uh, flow uh, between the fox, which is the main focal piece, but adding a little bit of those same colors in uh, various hints. I'll use one there. I'll make probably one more uh, flower that color and or um, maybe I just do it on the butterfly, but we'll get there. Just adding in pops of color here and there uh, just to make sure that everything flows. So uh, I did want to uh, say that I have actually been probably almost two weeks making this particular video uh, for reasons that I cannot quite um, put my mind around. I have not been able to maintain concentration to do the editing on this video for very long at a time. So I do apologize that there is a big gap between the original stream that featured this, which was the, I believe the one on the 16th, of February and when I'm finally going to release this final version. Uh, but what I'm doing now is I am using the fern. I believe that th these are the yellow green um, leaves and so I'm using fern to lay down a base layer of color and then I am going to go in with the, I believe the light olive uh, green and the uh, other color is the Ionian green. Um, in the Inktense set, there are uh, a cool and a warm selection of greens. I think that the, the yellow green is the warm uh, selection. And so I wanted to separate out uh, and make the leaves more distinctive on these large flowers by making them uh, the warm greens. Whereas I used the cool bluer greens on the ones that are closest to the ground. So these are ones that are more reaching for the sunshine so they get the warmer colors. Um, and and I've just caught myself uh, coloring in between the stem and the leaf. So I lift a little bit of that out there with the um, eraser. And um, those are very nifty to have, those battery powered erasers. But if you don't have one, you can just do it with a regular gum eraser. I would not advise trying to use a kneaded eraser for ink tents uh, because you do need to um, hit it pretty hard, you know, with a bit of pressure in order to lift ink tents off the page. So I just wanted to show you from sort of start to finish uh, how I do a whole leaf set like this. And, um, and yeah, <laughs> so anyway, while we watch this, uh, let's see, what have I been doing for, well, obviously I streamed on Sunday and I will be doing another video on the project that we started on Sunday, um, which was a mandala from my book, uh, 40, or uh, my book of mandalas, the best of C.L. Aldridge art mandalas, um, not to be confused with the best of C.L. Aldridge art 40 fan favorites, which is also out there. All right, so now this is the light olive, which is a slightly darker green. And I'm just going to add in some contrast lines, you know, some some stripes where it might be darker uh, toward the interior of the leaf, a little lighter on the outside, um, you know, maybe the veining, uh, just to add visual interest so that the leaves aren't flat and all one color. Um, you can achieve a lot with your coloring if you just variegate the colors a little bit and think about the sunshine. Think about when you look at the sunshine on flowers in the garden and how it hits the leaves differently, dependent upon what direction the leaves are facing. 
and um, and just it like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't even have to be there. Straight coloring is fine, even in a Maria Troll book or a uh, Nick Filbert book or a Kirby Roseanne's book. You can get as complicated or as simple as you want with your coloring. Uh, I happen to like adding some variegation. Uh, now I've got the that's the Ionian green uh, in my hand. I love the name of that one. Um, and I'm doing sort of the base of these. Remember that this is all going to be activated with water. And um, so these are just hints of darker colors that are all going to be melded and washed in. And, uh, and it looks very, very pretty. And I love the way that this particular project turns out in the long run. And uh, as you can see, even sped up, it, it doesn't really take that long to do this process. With ink tents, I like uh, to you know lay down all my layers first, then activate them with water, and then go back in and do touch-up work. So you can see on the set that I've already done over on the left-hand side of the page, um, that does have two um, goes at it. Um, I did add you know a, a second uh, bit of color, and I learned from doing the first one how to make the second one, so that I hopefully only had to use one coat on this one. primary focal flower. Uh, now for this, I decided to go ahead and use the fuchsia, which I have been using all along. And I do the out, outer leaves, obviously, um, or the, you know, the base layer with this pretty fuchsia color. And then I believe I'm going to bring in the Shiraz which is uh, in the reds. It is like a wine color. And I believe the other one that I bring in is the red violet. So these are uh, pretty much the same colors that I used in the one up there above my right hand, uh, the big one that we did on stream. Um, and But I'm using them in a different way. I'm actually being a little bit lighter with laying down the base layer of the... Um, fuchsia and uh, and then not quite as bold or as dark with the other colors because this flower is a little more open so there's a little more light getting in there and the colors would not be nearly so concentrated um, as they are in say that the one up there on the right because it's you know it's bunched together so that's the Shiraz that I have right now and I'm using it as my darkest color and then I'll bring in the red violet which is more of a a um, it's well the red violet is technically a darker pink uh, I don't use it in that you know in a super dark way uh, plus allowing the variegation of two or three different colors to work together uh, also adds interest to coloring. And this is something that I really learned from um, Lori over at Color My World because uh, she has um, a, she's a Prismacolor expert and she does a lot of different um, uh, colorings that feature colors that are, while they're not the primary color in a particular flower or piece of candy or whatever, they're used to give a subtle shading or a subtle um, interest to a, a piece that you, you don't always see. And uh, when you look at, say, photographs in a magazine, um, 
faces especially. And, you know, you realize just how deep the purples are in the shadows and just how dark the brown is around a, a particular eye or, um, you know, or a, a shading of an ear. It's amazing how many colors are actually there when you look at it. And so when you're thinking about your coloring on the page, also think about those things. It wouldn't be out of line for me to bring in a blue here, for instance, and use it to add some visual interest. Um, as a matter of fact, I wished I'd have thought of that when I was coloring it. But, uh, you know, adding a blue in would be an ideal because as you would be looking at this flower in nature, there would probably be a little bit of blue somewhere uh, that the eye could detect, but which when you look at the overall flower, it looks pink. Um, and so these are all things that when I'm coloring, I'm actually sort of mulling all of these things over in my mind, uh, you know, as to what uh, what it is that I'm coloring, what it is that I want, you know, what kind of a look I'm trying to achieve. Is it something sophisticated? Is it something playful? These are all things that sort of go into color choices and deciding uh, all of those things. And it's not a matter of a, a particular inborn talent or anything like that. It really is a matter of study. You know, you're, you're sort of you're studying your hobby, you're really taking a look at photographs, you're learning to, to see, um, you know, see all of the stuff that's actually there. And you will be surprised at the number of things that you see that you didn't realize were there when you do it. Okay, so now I have completed all of the flowers and it was just sort of more of the same and I am gathering up my ink tents and um, so I uh, don't have to sit and put them all away. I'm just putting them all in a jar uh, in an effort to save time. I apologize for my lighter sitting in the middle of my desk. Big surprise. Yes, I smoke. Um, and I've decided to use my Derwent Graphitens uh, to do the background. Now, if you are unfamiliar with Graphitens, what these are are water-soluble graphite. So where ink tents is water-soluble ink, these are actually water-soluble pencil. And um, what I've got in my hand is the, I believe I've got the cloud gray. Uh, they come in a set of 24 colors. And um, I either have the cloud gray or the storm. And uh, what these are, um, are very, very subtle. They're very subtly tinted. And uh, they are just exactly what they are. They're a pencil. And then when you put water to them, they uh, the color comes up. And they move around, not so much like a watercolor, um, but they can be lifted afterward. Um, all you have to do is get them wet again. They can be distressed if you wanted to uh, lay down color and then, you know, spray water on top. But th to me, they're perfect for a subtle background. I wanted to make it a little misty uh, toward the ground and then work my way up toward a bluer sky. So I do, um, in looking at the finished drawing here in my book, I do start with the gray and then I go into like a lavender. Okay, yeah, that's what I did. I started with the cool gray. That's it. I started with the cool gray, kept it in the blues. Then I went to the shadow and then I went to the ocean blue. Now ocean also can double for sky. Um, so, and I'm just putting a very, very subtle layer down and then I'll activate it with water and I'm just showing you, it doesn't, it, it's much more visible on the, than it is uh, in this video. But um, we're going to cut forward here to uh, where it's actually almost done and in just a second. And it'll look really good, I promise. And there we go. <laughs> it is, in fact, done. And as you can see, I picked up a little helper along the way. She's been throwing in her two cents, pushing the pencil around. Uh, you know, offering her help. All right, so now I am going to do this little butterfly, which is the last element that we have left. And I did just want to do it in a golden yellow uh, to pick up the golden, you know, that the last bit of that golden color. Looks like I'm throwing my tools, but I'm really not. Um, <laughs> I think probably about the 90th time I tried to shoo the cat away and then I got up and found her asleep right in the middle of the book again. 
It's like, okay, fine, I finally stopped fighting her. Um, so my original intent with this little guy, uh, with this little butterfly here, was that I wanted to make him sparkly. And uh, I don't know why I didn't. I do try to make him sparkly with, um, uh, with some white uh, uniball. And, uh, but the white doesn't show up very well against the golden yellow. So I think if I were going to try and do it again, I would uh, pick a different color to do it. I am do just doing the little body with the micron because it is such a tiny, tiny space um, that I wanted it a little more precision than with a uh, particular brush. But overall, I am just really delighted with the way that this has turned out. And um, I did show it briefly in Sunday's stream and uh, folks did like it. So hopefully people did um, are, are enjoying watching this, even if it is a bit after the fact of when I actually colored it. Uh, Okay, yeah, so here is where I'm, I'm adding the uniball, and I finally I get a little bit disgusted with it, so I wipe it all off with a paper towel, and um, then I decide that maybe I'll try the glitter gel pen, and that works a little bit better. So uh, I'm just using the, I think the copper glitter gel pen, just adding a little bit of glitter dots once again, just to give it some visual interest. Also, on the, um, yeah, there, that's what I'm doing. Uh, on the uh, little stamens inside the peonies, I'm also adding some glitter gel pen as well. And I'd actually already added it to the, uh, to the larger one, even though it's very hard to see, or not the larger one, but the, the dark colored one there on the left. So hopefully you did enjoy this video, and if you did, please uh, hit that like, and hopefully you will choose to subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you as a subscriber. And uh, so this is uh, Christine and Coriander signing off, and until we meet again, please color something pretty. Bye, everybody.